Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to start a series of technical videos on using the ESP8266. I love this little microcontroller, but I don't love it in this form factor. I mean, if you need it to be tiny, this is the way to go. But it can be kind of a pain and you're really limited on pins. So for these videos, we're going to be using a Wemos D1 Mini Pro, which is my favorite version of the ESP8266. I like it for a lot of reasons. You can use an external antenna with it. It does not have a lot of pins broken out that you can't use, which is a problem I do have with some other boards. It's very small. I find it to be reliable, and uh, I just find it doesn't give me as much fuss as other boards. So that's what we're gonna be using. For reference, I'll be pointing things out on a board like this, just so we can see the pin out. The actual work is gonna get done on this board. And you'll notice this board has a screen on it. This is another reason why I love these. You can actually get a super, super tiny OLED screen to go on here, which hardly adds to the form factor, but is, is super, super convenient. So we'll be using one of these that's already soft together on a breadboard and uh, if I need to point something out on a pin that would be covered by that we'll use this. As you've probably guessed from the title of the video today we're going to be looking at how to interface with a micro SD card. These are super convenient, they're super small and uh, it turns out that they're pretty easy to use if you know what you're doing. So I'm hoping this video will make your life a little easier trying to use one of these in your projects and maybe even inspire you to add one to your project if you haven't already. First, let's cover some basic stuff about SD cards. Originally, the full-size SD card came out right around 2000, 2001. This was a replacement for those weird, thin, almost like floppy MMC cards from back in the day. I think it was originally meant to be used for music distribution, hence the SD, which stands for Secure Digital. But the format got so popular that that whole scheme kind of got lost. The micro version came out in 2005, just a couple of years after the mini. It's pretty much stayed the same, except the hardware keeps getting faster and the amount of memory keeps going up. When you buy new SD cards for most things, you're going to want to pay attention to the symbols on here denoting how fast they are, as well as the size. Although for most microcontroller projects, you're not going to need much size and you're definitely not going to be maxing the speed out on these. So the meaning on all these symbols and things are kind of out of scope for this video. And there are actually two ways to talk to these cards. The first is called SDIO mode which is what most of your consumer electronics like cameras will use. It's a whole lot faster, but it's also a whole lot harder to use. The second mode is what we're using, which is just plain old SPI. It's pretty easy to use for most microcontrollers. So what would you even do with one of these cards in your project? I like to use it for logging sensor information like a GPS device, for making it really easy to read and write configuration data or other files from the SD card, I can just edit it right on my computer. I also like to use these things for logging data than checking it later on a computer. This can help a lot with things like debugging when you're not able to get a serial console to your device. And probably the most obvious use would be reading graphics or sounds from the card. So let's talk about your options for actually reading one of these cards. If you happen to have a full-size SD card reader laying around, you could of course just plug the adapter that always comes with these cards into it and use that as a monstrous way to read one of these cards. I wouldn't fault you for that, but we can do better. Nowadays, these micro SD card readers are super cheap. These are really convenient because they already have the level shifters built in and the voltage regulator, just in case you're using a 5 volt microcontroller. Believe it or not, you can actually just use the card adapter that comes with these micro SD cards. They already support SBI natively, so it's just a matter of soldering pins onto the back here and making sure you're only ever using 3.3 volts on all the I.O. and power. You can see that I made this one for testing out of crappy jumpers. I didn't actually end up needing all of these wires, which you'll see later. But it works just fine, as long as you're careful about only giving these 3.3 volts for power and for logic. And of course, these aren't ESP8266s, but you will find boards that have their own SD card slots built in, like this Python board here and this Teensy. Before we talk about actually wiring these things up, first let's talk about preparing the SD card. You're going to want to format it in FAT16 or FAT32. I find it's easiest just to use the official SD card formatter. You can get it free and it'll take care of any problems you might have with new SD cards. Once you've downloaded and installed it, go ahead and run it. When it opens, select your SD card. 
Just leave it on quick format. Give your volume a label if you like and click format. Once that's all set, go ahead and set it off to the side. You're not going to want it in your card reader like I did while you're wiring it up, just in case you mess something up. On the Wemos D1 Mini Pro, all of the native SBI pins are right here. Of course on these processors you could pretty much use any pin for anything you want, but we're going to be using the native SPI bus here for this. So we're going to use D5, which is the SCK or clock pin, D6, which is the MISO or input pin, D7, which is the MOSI or output pin, and D8 we're just going to be using for chip select. I'm going to go ahead and wire up the basic SD card adapter and then we'll run our test code on it. As you can see, I have everything wired up here. The only thing that's a little bit confusing is that even though this is a 3.3 volt card, these reader modules come with voltage regulators and line level logic shifters. So these modules actually want 5 volts, not 3.3 volts. So let's take a look at the serial console real quick and just confirm that it's working. In order to work with the card and code, we're going to use the SDFAT library. It's actually pretty simple to use, although the example code is written in a way that's not very familiar to people who code for the Arduino. I rewrote the basics to make it a little easier. As you can see, it starts, it reads the card information, pulls the size, then we make a directory, write a file, read a file, and delete the directory, among other things. So yeah, everything clears. Looks good. Let's move on to our second example where we'll actually hook up one of these little SD card adapters and use that instead. Like I said before, if you're going to try to interface directly with one of these adapters, you have to make sure you don't ever plug this into a 5 volt rail. If you do, it will fry your card. So you have to be very careful that you don't power this with 5 volts and you don't plug any of the I.O. pins into 5 volt I.O. lines. This may mean that you need to use a line level shifter. In the case of an ESP8266, the line level is already 3.3 volt, so that's going to be just fine. You just do not want to plug this thing into the 5 volt power right there. So okay, enough of that, let's hook this thing up. So there you go, that's it. We could take a look at the serial console. We'll see that it's running the same exact test, same code, no difference. The big difference here is that you're gonna need two ground pins, which is why I broke this out. And of course, this is only gonna run off of 3.3 volts and not five. Otherwise, it's just SPI, exactly like you would expect it to be. So yeah, you probably got a lot of these sitting around the house anyways if you already have micro SD cards. If you have 3.3 volt microcontrollers like an ESP8266, you could probably start using these right now for no extra money. Some things that are important to consider when making a project like this are, you have to make sure that you close your files, otherwise your changes won't get applied to them. Also, you don't want to make projects that are constantly writing to the SD card over long periods of time eventually it'll corrupt or destroy the card. Another thing to keep in mind is that the file names are in 8.3 format, which means the file names can only be up to 8 characters long with a 3 character extension. Also the file names are not case sensitive, so you have to be careful with that too. 